Welcome everyone, it's Sunday at the time of this recording, and you know what that means. No, you probably don't. You should, though, since it was in the title of the video. It's Q&A time. Thanks to all of you that submitted your questions via Twitter. I look forward to answering them here today. Hopefully there will be some good ones. We shall see. And remember, if you want to ask your questions for future Q&A videos, go to Twitter at OTR Essential is the Twitter handle. You can tweak those questions there when I ask for them. You can also, if you haven't done so before, click that subscribe button. Click the bell, what the hell. Get notified whenever I upload new videos. Lots of stuff going on here. Uh, Kieran Chase is going to kick us off today by asking, with everything you say about the Breakfast Club, why is it Hogan the leader or a member? Like, the Breakfast Club's not even in Hogan's League when you talk about backstage politicking and so forth. Like Hogan was so good at politics, he could even figure out a way to make the losses make him look better better than the person that won. See WrestleMania 18. Why, why would Hogan lower himself or sully himself with the Breakfast Club standard? Just saying. Disco Ben asks, what's a bigger work? Meltzer Star Innings <laughs> or the Montreal Screwjob. <laughs> Damn. That's a good one, Ben. Sheesh. Meltzer Star Ratings or Montreal Screwjob. What's the bigger work? I got to go with Meltzer Star Ratings, man. I mean, the Montreal Screwjob, totally a work, but... Star ratings from a guy that's never been a wrestler have now become some type of gold standard for professional wrestling, allowing this guy to make six figures. He's the greatest worker in the business today. That's Dave Meltzer. That's the bigger work. The Meltzer star ratings. Oh my God, I'm going to base everything off of Japan. And as a result, if you wrestle there, you're going to have star plus bonus in him. That's the bigger work. Vols fan, 0531. What marquee matches should WWE build to for WrestleMania 37? I think right now it depends. Because you could go, let's say, for example, Roman Brock. Want to go down the family tree, you could go Roman Rock. But if I'm going to be doing it in LA but or somewhere else, but there are no fans, there's only a limited number of fans, how much do I really want to blow the load? at that WrestleMania, just realistically being honest here. Um, you know, you would certainly think at this point that they're probably building towards Big E winning the Rumble match and fighting for one of the two belts at Mania. Um, I highly doubt they're going to wait for Sasha and Bayley at Mania. I don't know, I'd have to think about this a little bit more honestly, but I think a lot of it depends on what happens in the next couple of months or whether the situation gets better or not. Um, to determine you know, what you would actually want to throw out there and how much money you want to throw at WrestleMania 37. Apoorv Shankar asks, Who is the bigger star, Austin or The Rock, and who did you prefer? Now, certainly you could talk about the great business that WWF did the time that Austin was out during the peak of the Attitude Era. You could talk about, well, when Rock was the top guy, they drew the best ratings ever. You could certainly make a very, very strong argument for The Rock here in terms of the wrestling time and only the wrestling time. But at the end of the day, as awesome and incredible as The Rock was, like Austin was different. It was Austin's era. It was just crazy that the WWE had both of those guys at the same time. You could go decades without having one of them. They had both of them at the same time. Uh, who did I prefer? The Rock. That's who I preferred. Um, Lord JCW asks, have you ever thought about doing a King of the Ring review series? Yes, I've thought about that several times. 2021 sure would seem like if I'm ever going to do it, seems like a perfect time to do so. And I am strongly thinking about it. But I want to wait until I get closer to when King of the Ring would have traditionally actually happened. That's why I don't, let's say, do it in November or December, let's say. Uh, Byron Andreas asks, should AJ Styles and Dominic become a tag team? And maybe you have Dominic turn heel and say he's going to AJ Styles as a more successful father figure. No. 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 Just, just no. No, that's 
sounds P-U. I'm sorry, Byron, it does. It sounds P-U. Dave G asks, will you ever bring back the Retro Review Series? Yes. Maybe as soon as this Thursday. Maybe the following Thursday. I was originally planning to bring it back last week, actually, to talk about the first ever WCW Monday Nitro. Um, haven't done that yet. It may, may actually do that one Thursday. Um, but we'll see. But it's coming back. I just don't know if it's going to be this week or the next week. Da, da, da. Uh, Jagor492 asks a brilliant question. Is there a better role model than Roman Reigns right now? The answer is no. The man looks out for his family. He follows all the rules. He doesn't try to hog all the glory. He is a man of his word. He holds up to what the shirts say. What is there not to like in respect about this man? He's clearly single-handedly saved SmackDown. Like, that's an undisputable fact. You can get your fake news out of here about, we smacked him and didn't be kind of good before he did that. Shut up! He saved it! Don't deny it just because you want to be haters. Uh, there is not a better role model than Roman Reigns right now. Great family man, great husband, great father. Like, you go on and on and on and on and on. He's the one! Jackass, have you ever watched Technical Work Rate Productions? No. I'm assuming YouTube wrestling related channel? Yes. I have not. Not that I can recall, not that I can remember. It is not meant to be a slight or a knock on them, but the reality is I got so much other crap going on in my life along with trying to find time to watch, you know, actually upload videos for this channel and then the sports channel. I just don't have a lot of time to watch, watch a lot of other people's wrestling YouTube videos. Why would I want to do that? Uh, if I do watch things on YouTube, it's probably more pertaining to history and other things of interest to kind of get my mind off of work and off of YouTube and other personal stuff. Um, the Wrestling Guardian asks, when Vince buys AEW, should the elite become a new spirit squad? <laughs> Maddie! Nikki! Kenny! <laughs> Cody! Question of the Q&A so far. What am I going to say when Vince buys AEW? What makes you even think he's going to be in a position to do that? He's got enough stuff to worry about right now. Let's, let's not go there. That was a funny question, though, I got to admit. Uh, Son Goshuaku asked, um, Who was one superstar that you had high hopes for but left you disappointed and one that you didn't think much of but the career ended up pleasantly surprising you? And I think you were asking this question specific to retired wrestlers. Um... The first one, I'll go Ahmed Johnson. Had incredibly high hopes for him. Left me disappointed. I could have also went with the alpha male Monte Brown, but we know what happened there. Freaking mid-card piece of crap held him down. Um, as far as the one that I didn't think much of, but their career ended up pleasantly surprising me, you know, early on, I wasn't a huge edge guy. I was not. I didn't see what the big deal was. I'm like, eh, he's an adequate wrestler, but he always felt like mid-card for life type of material. And once he really got into that ultimate opportunist persona, like I, I started to see it and feel it and believe it. Like he grew on me over the years. But in the tag team, ENC, like it was a cool tag team, but I did not have much hopes for him being a massive, you know, single star and he'll never be like a top flight single star but he certainly was a star he just wasn't a mega star um christian mingle do you think instead of teaching how to bump and do moves etc in wrestling school they should teach people how to be characters mic skills and how to tell a story yes like that should be the primary focus before you start worrying about the stupid matches and i'm not here to say that the moves don't matter and the matches don't matter because they certainly do but what happens so often, these kids go to these wrestling schools and all they teach them is the basics. And you got these stupid trainers and they sit there and say, I'm going to break them into the business the hard way. Your, your way is stupid. Teach them how to get over. Teach them how to be a character. Teach them how to be a personality. Try to help them find the internal charisma if they even have any. And sometimes people just don't. Teach these guys how to talk on a mic. Like really drive on that. A few less flips. 
and a few more opportunities to speak. Um, it would make a significant difference, that's for sure. Wrestling Rants asks, are you still considering redoing the review series for all the big four shows? You still haven't reviewed WrestleMania 35 or the second night of WrestleMania 36. And I really appreciate how you guys always remind me of some of those things. And you hold me to that standard and you make sure I don't forget that I haven't done those certain videos. It's like you can't let it go and that's fantastic. Um, am I still considering redoing the review series for all four big shows? Considering, yes. It's 50-50 at this point. There's so one challenge of it is if I actually redo them, like now you've added, since I did them a few years back, you've added a few more years worth of shows. And if I was going to do it, I would start like totally over, at least to get to the historical ones. And to me, that requires re-watching all of those shows. I'm not just going to sit there and go off of memory or go off of notes or go off of Wikipedia or go off of other sites and other reviews. Like I'm going to review it. I'm going to review it. It means actually having to watch it. So you talk about having to get through potentially 30 years of WrestleMania, let's say, or 30 years-ish of the Royal Rumble. That's a lot of wrestling to watch in a relatively short period of time. So I, I, I really got to think about it before I commit to that because I also don't want to commit to it, start it, and then get burnt out and then have it affect other things on the channel and lead to me wanting to take a break because I'm tired of it. Right, so I got to be really, really careful here. Um, Keys 10 asks, what loss did more damage, CM Punk versus Triple H at Night of Champions 2011 or Wyatt versus Cena at WrestleMania 30? I think it's Punk and what they did to him in 2011. Like, they could have used that for months. Like, he shouldn't even have entertained him being back full-time until at least the Royal Rumble. They should have sent CM Punk all over the country and all over the world defending the WWE title at independent shows and... WWE going to court to try and get a cease and desist order against CM Punk. Like, you should have went the whole nine yards with that shit. And then you got this whole crap with him and Triple H. Like, that hurt way more than Wyatt losing to Cena. Like, Wyatt losing to Cena was stupid because that's what John Cena does is stupid crap. Um, but that was not as bad as CM Punk losing. Rick Styles, 1985, asks, should Impact and ROH merge to become a third major company? You're assuming that their merging would actually make them a major company. No, it wouldn't, and no, they shouldn't. At Edsel 4, how would you book Cena versus Orton in the main event of WrestleMania in the Ultimate Breakfast Club match? If I'm going to do a booking video about that, either one of two things are going to happen. One, you're going to have to pay to see it. Or two, I'm going to have to be in such an incredible, fantastic, splendiferous mood that the company is actually going in that direction that I decide out of the goodness of my heart to give you that booking video for free. And if you enjoyed the last one I did a couple years back with Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar, I ain't got nothing on this one. I promise you. Promise. Best believe. Uh, Danny Boy, who does Jim Cornette hate more? Vince Russo or Kenny Omega? Why, why are you asking me who Jim Cornette hates more? Why did you ask Jim Cornette? It's got to be Vince Russo, though. I know he calls Kenny. Does he call Kenny like Kenny Olivier? <laughs> this week, be sweet, be clean, be clean. <laughs> so okay. He's got to hate Russo, though, more. Way more. Like, there's two plus decades of history there. That's got to be who he hates more. Uh, Trinell Sally asks, uh, should Roman Reigns and the Usos form a faction and call it kind of black? No, because as soon as they put black in their name at all, Vince is immediately going to become disinterested in the whole thing and try to kill the punch. Why would you do that to him? No. No. No, that's funny. MC17 Clark closes out this Q&A by asking, what do you think Scott Steiner says during sexual intercourse with his wife? <laughs> Whatever the fuck he wants to. I hope he sits there and breaks down to the bitch a math lesson. <laughs> you got a six, you got a, a hundred and just sixty ticks and two thirds percents. You take my percents and add your percents and bitch you're getting mumbled. <laughs> It'd be fantastic. <laughs> I've had some fun with this Q&A. What the hell? Thank you guys for submitting questions. I truly do appreciate it. Again, subscribe, like the video, do all that other crap. Uh, remember, OTR Essential, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. I'm just like Danny. I'll see you later.